Welcome to the business edition of PM Express. And today we're looking at the introduction of the single common currency, the ECO. Before 2000, heads of state in the region actually met and decided that to aid actually trading across the regions, they need a common currency to help this make a realization or to come to pass. They decided that certain several convergence criteria need to be set so that if each country, especially in the English-speaking zone, meet this criteria, they go ahead and introduce this single common currency. It appears that after several years, this plan to have this currency had eluded us because we struggled to keep the common or the single convergence criteria and also issues about what should be done with the French-speaking countries that complete the West African zone or the West African region. But we're trying to find out whether this thing, the currency, would come to pass or not. Or it will remain maybe a myth and will never be realized. On PM Express, I'll be joined by President of the Ghana Union of Traders, Dr. Joseph Obeng. The traders, what do they have to say about it? We'll also be bringing in the thoughts of an economist and a finance person as well to have some discussion on this. At the end of the day, we want to find out whether this single common currency would indeed happen or not. Will we live to see this currency being issued? Or maybe it would never happen. All these and more on PM Express on the Business Edition. My name is George. I'll be back after this break. Welcome back to business edition of PM Express. As we talk about the eco, will it come to pass or not? Or it will remain something that will actually elude us and it will never, never, never come to pass? Well, as we talk about this on PM Express, I have with me Dr. Joseph Obeng. He is the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association. And we're bringing in the perspective of traders. They will be day trade a lot along our borders. They bring in goods from other West African countries. And what do they make of this? What are their concerns? Will it come to pass or not? Are there issues that they need to be addressed right now? When they go about trading along our borders, what are their concerns? In terms of even moving from a CD, a Naira, and a CFA franc, what is actually happening right now? We'll bring in the thoughts of the economist, the finance person, Dr. Lord Mensa, and also a trade consultant who actually appreciate development in the West African region. Are we prepared for this or to just elude us again after several years of postponement? Remember, your views, your comments are welcome here on PM Express, on the Joy News channel on Multi TV, on Facebook. Your views are welcome on the Joy News TV channel. You can drop your comments there and we'll read it here on air for our viewers to also know what are your thoughts. Are you ready? For this single common currency and also on my personal handle jrfi on twitter as well you can drop your thoughts there we'll try to read it out to our viewers out there and very soon we're joining on with dr um Ibnez Ampabi. he is a trade consultant and i'll bring him but doc good evening and, and thank you so much for having time to join us here on business edition of the pm and we really really appreciate your time for all the challenges that we're going through and i'll be hearing your thoughts actually to help me appreciate what is happening on the ground with respect to what your members are saying. Is it a good news? How are they managing the situation now in moving dollar, Naira, CFA, and all those things? But let me first go onto the line and speak to Ebenezer Ampabing. He's a trade consultant. And let's get some understanding on this whole uh, eco thing and whether we should be excited about this or we should just be careful. Mr. Ebenezer Ampabing, thank you so much for joining us this evening on uh, PM Express. Now, first, help us understand what was the main rationale when the heads of state met and said that we need a single common currency, especially for the English-speaking countries. Thank you very much. And a uh, correction here. My name is Richard Ampabi, not Ebenezer. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, People Richard. get confused about Ebenezer <laughs> and Ebenezer. Sorry, Richard, yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah, to start with, I would say a perspective from the whole thing is that of a mixed one. Now, if we are talking about current, what is current? Ordinary currency is a system of money in common use. 
So if we are saying that uh, the whole subbridge of ECOWAS, we are using ECO, then it's a good news. It is a good news because, one, it is going to increase the volume of trade. You know, currency and of course common. So if you are having a common currency, for sure, your market is going to increase. And to get this, you need to remove trade barriers. And in West Africa, what we see, last November, I went to Lome. And coming back, going and coming, they insisted taking sensitive from me. I asked them, the density for what? They said for me, yes, fine, I will pay. So I mean, one yet, guy in the picture, I so. And they were unable to give me So I'm saying that the restrictions are so there. It's embedded in our sociocultural um, development of our people. Now, this common currency also will reduce transactional costs, such that if you are going to Cote d'Ivoire to trade, you don't need to change your city into safer before you can transact your business. So the, that transactional cost is out. You can even decide to ship your goods to Cote d'Ivoire or Togo and bring it to Ghana. If you feel um, transacting business in Ghana is that cumbersome or whatever, you go to where you think you can get easy transaction. So this one, nobody will say it's not good. It will also boost economic activities in the region. And here... Uh, the, 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 the benefits of this currency, but for the benefit of my viewers and benefit of those who are uh, monitoring this whole discussion, trying to get the whole rationale behind this. And I mean, reading the, the books, we got the understanding that for the founding fathers of the economic group in ECOWAS, they wanted to aid trade among the members. And that is why they proposed this. There's more talk about bilateral trade now. Today, do you think that the single common currency is still relevant in this region? No, you see, the other time I met, I did indicate that we sat down for events to overtake us. And I'm making reference to the entire African, um, um, the bigger market. So now if we had sat down for the continental state president of ECOWA, what are we doing here? Do we do this 2020 and then maybe 2021 when the continental trade area also takes off? Then we decide to come and change the currency or what? Now, my brother, the point here is that um, you are dealing with issues of uh, criteria before you can go into this kind of um, currency arrangement. What is the performance of this country? Who wants to have a common currency? The point I'm drawing home is that the economic levels of the countries are not the same. Take, for instance, Nigeria having a GDP of $445 billion with debt ratio of 17.5% or let's say 18%. The next biggest economy is Ghana, 58 billion. And we are having about 68% um, debt ratio. The one that comes next is Cote d'Ivoire, $45.2 billion. Now, when you come to the lesser ones, Togo, Celerion, uh, Benin, you are talking about 9.7 billion for Togo. If you go to Celerion, you are talking about uh, 3.2 billion. So if we are not also careful, we are going to create what we call backyard of other countries. Backyard in the sense that if we are not careful, these countries will largely be depending on Ghana, Nigeria, and Cote d'Ivoire. And once you begin to depend on these countries, then you are back here. 
expect that ideally, if there are economic problems, then these countries must bail out uh, the lesser countries who will be taking advantage of. At least we have seen that of the more advanced uh, single currency regime of um, um, the European Union. What we see, Germany, Britain, France, whenever there's a problem, for mm. instance, Greece and Portugal, they were in to bail them out. Mm. Is Ghana, Nigeria, especially these two countries, prepared to bail out if there should be a problem mm. as we go along? Mr. Mr. Mpabeng, should we allow, should the whole convergence criteria about this eco be reviewed again by the heads of state? We understand that there will be an emergency meeting later this month by the technical team and the central bank governors, and then they will no, forward I their... No, I hesitate to call for emergency meeting because there's no agency in state. It was only in uh, June that the uh, head of state met, that is 29 June 2019, and adopted the feasible um, single current, that is the ECO, to take place in January 2020. I beg to say, when we know that the criteria set out to go into this has not been met, where is the central bank of ECO? Where can I locate? Nigeria so and, and, and Ghana are battling for which country should get the right to host it. So why don't we settle it? Do we want to go into it, circulate the currency, and now uh, if Nigeria is having $445 billion, and you think they would just sit down there, allow you 68 to be the anchor, Mm. These are questions we need to ask ourselves appropriately. Yes, I underscore the total friendship between Ghana and Nigeria, which transfers to even those of us that sit in. But of late, what are we seeing? Mr. Pabe. Nigeria's closing border. Ghana, our great brothers, are also closing shop. But when we bring this, we are now telling ourselves that the whole West Africa we are one. Anybody at all anywhere can go and set up this. Mm. And our local law will no longer apply. Mr. Mpabe, I mean, law. finally, do you think that we should forget about this eco? Well, I'm not in a position. Uh, as a, uh, you, you, I mean, you, you, you play in this space. You, you consult. I do. And I do. If the heads of state try to seek your advice on this, should we go ahead? Or should forget oh, about I'll it. tell them the whole idea of single currency has stayed. We allowed it to stay. We should have done this in 2005. If we had done it in 2005, by this time, I think we would have been 15 years down the lane in this whole transaction. So mm. 15 years of currency, if you are changing it, no difficult. My brother, let's set our minds back to Ghana. We just printed 200 and 100. He didn't know. Now, if we say this January, we are going into eco, what becomes the cost of printing this 200 and 100 loop? Okay. Did we have uh, in our minds that we are going to go into eco? It okay. tells me clearly that the minds of the governor and the economic management is never, never into going into eco this January. So, in my mind, we are not going to go into January. And we should forget about it. Mr. Richard Ampabe, he is a trade consultant. I thank you so much for your time for joining us on the business edition of PM Express. Let me bring in Dr. Joseph Obeng. He is the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association. And and and, and Doc, you can listen to the comment by Richard Ampabe. He is a trade consultant. But let me first understand that, that from your members, what's the situation now when they have to trade? across the region. Is it that smooth for them or it's quite challenging switching from CFA, Naira, CD, dollar, pound, euros? Yeah. Um, switching to the single currency definitely would have worked in our favor because of the challenges such as the one that you were talking about, the burden of um, um, exchanging different currencies before you can do trade. Meanwhile, we are supposed to 
foster trade among ourselves. And so um, the coming of the ECO definitely will have um, um, serious advantages um, for us. And, and they are varying. Mm. Uh, we, um, I've listed a lot of our advantages. Mm. That, but the cardinal point is if it could be done and done well. Mm. Um, if you're listening to the good um, economist, yeah. um, the consultant, you, I mean, you couldn't have said anything better than what those things that you <laughs> A little saying. bit skeptical about this yeah, whole thing. Uh, yeah, because that's, what, that's, that's how the approach should be. Because we are looking this through the lenses of the ECOWAS protocol itself. Mm. What the protocol has over, uh, uh, been able to do, the challenges that um, it, it brought about, that's the apprehension. Mm. Otherwise, there's a misfeeling down there in the trading community that this thing definitely will be good, but is it going to work? Is it going to be sustainable? Mm. How, how are we going to address the challenges such as the ones that we encountered in the uh, ECOWAS protocol? So the, um, the countries should understand what they are going to commit themselves to. Mm. And they should, be, um, um, uh, they, they, they should be able to uh, know that they are going to commit themselves to something that is very cardinal to the, um, in the very lives of their people. Mm. And that's um, uh, some of the challenges the um, consultant um, articulated and mm. did it very well. Mm. And I believe that um, we all have to um, see through. Because um, if you do not have effective supervisory uh, mechanism, that will ensure um, that this thing works and work well. Then the problem that will uh, come after um, the ECOWA will be even worse than what um, mm. we think the single um, the individual currencies have brought to mm. bear. Has there been any sensitization for your members? I mean, when the heads of state met, they said that January 2020, from the Bank of Ghana, from the West African Monetary Institute, for your members about this uh, planned issuance of this currency this year? No, but if the, the timing that we, we had is anything to go by, that it will start on the uh, January mm -hmm. um, of this year, mm -hmm. then w you are a journalist. Mm -hmm. What education have you heard of? What stake stakeholder engagement have we encountered or have, uh, um, have, we, have we received even as a trade body? None of these things have done, and we need a uh, stakeholder engagement for us all to uh, brainstorm and then see where the loopholes and all that the gray areas to tighten up. We don't go into such um, um, a, a major um, um, policy without um, taking the input from major stakeholders. In this case, we are very part of this, and we, we should be able to um, um, give our input. Mm. Um, um, if we, we, I have to go where the economy uh, was saying, mm. Nigeria alone is having about 70, 70% or 67 to 70% of the total GDP of the entire um, West African region. West African um, uh, member states um, put to, uh, together, they are having 67%. It doesn't strike a good um, balance. It doesn't strike a good balance. Because mm -hmm. if uh, there's a problem in um, Nigeria, it uh, carries uh, along all the other countries. Mm -hmm. Of course, likewise, if there's something good um, that um, also happened in Nigeria, it also trickle, uh, trickles down. But in these things, we do not... Um, um, you, you, you have to think through mm -hmm. and see all the options mm -hmm. and then uh, make sure that... Um, you do not put yourself mm. in, a, in, a, in a, a problem in perpetuity. Mm. And so, um, like the, prof uh, the consultant was saying, I think we have to hasten slowly mm. and then um, and, and tighten the loose ends, make sure that the proper things are going. We understand. Because um, what are the sanctions? Because we are going to fuse our economies together. Yeah. Are we going to be able um, to sanction those um, countries who will not comply or comply uh, comply because this uh, the fiscal um, um, the monetary policies and the discipline that we all have to do uh, how are we going to ensure that this thing uh, are stuck to the central bank that will be created how are they going to coordinate with the individual central banks and how is it going to help 
um, to the advantage of the various, because each country will have its own set of problems. <coughs> How are you going to do? For me, if it is uh, possible that if even we want to introduce the ECO, it can be done concurrently with our individual currencies. So any time that we are um, self-sufficient to do, in that case, we can use um, the currency together is an option. The banks will have the money retreat together. Mm. Or once the um, continental free trade area is coming, probably the whole idea of getting um, one um, single currency for Africa might be on the table again. Then we can think it through in the larger context of the continental free trade area, where then the countries are so many, where we can strike reasonable balance because of the um, nature of the um, economies, different economies that will be fused together. When your members heard the news about this eco, were they excited? Were they finally, at least I can get one standard currency that I can work around in the region? Or they were also a little bit skeptical about this, these traders who trade along the region. If you are looking uh, through the lenses of ECOWAS protocol and the problems that it has brought and the misunderstanding that is going on, then we were not so enthused. <coughs> because then um, the apprehension is that um, how are we going to effectively monitor this? How is one country not going to take unilateral decisions that will affect? Because um, using one currency is um, uh, such a major thing that uh, you cannot toy your economy with. And um, so that otherwise, um, uh, using one currency for such a regional block would have been a perfect thing. The burden of um, um, going to exchange, it will actually bring stability in prices because then the disparities in the rates of exchange in the various countries are not there because we are, we are using one currency. The, um, the international recognition of the echo itself is also a very good thing that was going to happen. And uh, easy movement of this, the banks, the coordination of banks um, along the sub-region is going to uh, make business very smooth because banks will then um, even open branches elsewhere and all that. I mean, there, there are so many um, good things that this thing would have uh, brought to bear. But then for the challenges and the, um, the, 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 the uh, something that we think hasn't been done right mm. is what is pulling us back. Mm. That's yeah. a very interesting one, of course. And if you just uh, join us, this is the business edition of uh, PM Express. And we're talking about the introduction of the single common currency, the ECO, and whether it would happen as we we're all expecting or it was something that would elude us. Are the structures in place? The West African Central Bank some countries meeting the convergence criteria to ensure that indeed this currency is issued as we all expect or not. Are all of these things in place to ensure that indeed as the 2020 deadline that was proposed by the heads of state is indeed realized or maybe it will just not come to pass. Dr. Joseph Obeng, he is the president of the Ghana Union of Trade Association. He is with me in the studio. Earlier on you had Richard Mpabi, he's a trade consultant, sharing some perspective with us. We hear the thoughts of another finance person, an economist and financial consultant, Dr. Lord Mensa, also giving his thoughts about this. Remember that your views and your comments are welcome on our social media handle, the Journey News TV handle on Facebook. What's your view on it? Do you trade? you do business across the region? And what are your thoughts about the eco? Do you think that finally it would happen or not? And very soon we're going to get to Dr. Lord Mensah. And before that, let me uh, read uh, just a quick clarification that uh, Dr. Bob Wati, he is the head of the Commerce Department of the University of Ghana, they got, he's saying that Nigeria accounts for 70.5% of the West African GDP, followed by Ghana, which is 8.1%, and Ivory Coast is 64 So it tells us that, listen, it's Nigeria. Let us go on to the line and speak to Dr. Lord Mensah. He is a, a finance person, he's an economist, he's a consultant. Doc, I appreciate your time so much, even though I know you are caught up in a lot of things. And, and for you, the eco, are you excited by it? Or maybe, listen, let us just be careful about this whole thing, about this introduction of this single common currency, the eco, Doc. Well, 
Well, um, George, um, good evening, and uh, let me say good evening to our viewers. Um, you know, um, with the echo, I'm happy with it. And if you look at the benefit that the euro is generating by those economic regions, I would say, yes, it's something that we should go by. However, the convergent criteria that was outlined, both the primary and the secondary, clearly you could see that countries are not stable in terms of meeting this criteria. Countries keep on going in, trying to meet the criteria, sometimes economic hardship and, you know, some things that they don't have control, like uh, global economic situations, moves them out of those convergent criteria. But what I would say is that those economic integrations and the common currencies don't come by countries not sacrificing for others. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the West African zone, Nigeria dominates in terms of trade, in terms of export and import, and even economic powers. So if some of the countries like Nigeria is not ready to sacrifice for other mm -hmm. countries, then I would say that, I mean, we might not realize it. Because, fine, we've set up the modalities that we're supposed to converge at this point for all of us to come together because at that level we presume that we are all operating at the same level the exposures are the same but then in the end it won't happen because the others might not be ready to sacrifice for those ones that are weak let me give you a typical example before the happenings of the euro the euro that we see now and we dab it as a, as, as a success for the European economic zone, some countries had to sacrifice. If you look at Germany, Germany was dominating all the economic powers. And in the end, they sacrificed. At a point where they were merging as, you know, common currency countries, even Greece and then Italy were not strong economies. But what happened? Germany gave in and they all came together. So what I would say is that, even though we've set up, you know, convergent criteria, in the end, some of the countries within the economic West African economic zone needs to sacrifice, i.e. Nigeria and those economic powers needs to sacrifice for others to come in. So I would say that, yes, the reality, we can come in. But in the end, um, we can't say we should all be at the same level because we started differently. And we have different economic set of criteria. So that is why I will insist that, you know, other countries need to sacrifice for us to come together uh, to enjoy the equal. Doc, looking into the crystal ball, do you think that any country in the region, or let's say our own big brother Nigeria, is prepared to sacrifice for the good of the introduction of this currency with the proposal being this year? Yeah, looking at what is happening now, even with the close of their borders, as we speak now, to goods that are coming in, I don't know whether I, uh, they want to test their market with local product or not, you know, before they start thinking about getting inflows elsewhere. It gives you the signal that, uh, I mean, they are not prepared. But it could also be a process that they are going through to see how dominant and how strong they are, they will be if they are to rely on, you know, their product in-house. They are to rely on, you know, exports that can, imports that can only benefit their citizens. So as it stands now, I will tell you they are not prepared to sacrifice. Mm. But economic integration is about being at the same level to accept common currency. Mm. You need to sacrifice for other countries for you, for all of you to come together. Mm. Doc, I would please hold on. Uh, we'll go for a short break and we'll bring you back again to the discussion as we look at whether the introduction of the eco it would happen or not. So please don't go away. We'll also be looking at some comments on our social media handles that is on the Join News TV handle as well. The eco would it happen? Or not? Will we all leave well, I'm to standby, realize whether this would happen or not? Let's do some uh, quick comments on the social media and what people are saying. If you can uh, 
just look at what people are saying about this whole eco. I have with me uh, in Qatar, and I said today I read only July 2020 is when we have planned to issue it, but delays could come in since there are few lapses mm, dealing with. But for me, it did pain me say CFA is taken to Ghana go die. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to read that uh, pigeon. Uh, Hereta Mante says they have already printed 200 and then 100 notes with the taxpayers' money. Hmm. Is it Humphrey uh, that's so more? I hope I got the name word right. The best way is to go for liberation of our economy. Well, Joseph Arca said, for the Francophone country, yes. Anglophone, Anglophone, I'm still searching for how Nigeria, Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone are going to handle this matter uh, called counterfeit. That's his problem that Joseph is worried about counterfeiting of the currency. Let's do the last one. We'll go for the break. I'll we'll come back. Uh, Issa says, warning, it's bad news because the eco is still and will be under the colonial control. If you guys listen to one of or some of the interview or the president of the Ivory Coast made, will make you guys just know and realize that the CFA is the eco. Think about it, guys. Ghana shouldn't go into this. People are already skeptical about this whole uh, currency and whether that would happen or not. And let me also be, I'll be soon to also be bringing the comment of Professor uh, Bar Boati, the head of the Economics Department of the University of Ghana, Legon. We'll take a short break. This is PM Express Eco. Will it happen or not? <laughs> Welcome back to the business edition of PM Express. As you look at the introduction of the single common currency, the eco, and whether it will come to pass or again it would elude us this year, as our head sources are now pushing for it to happen this year. Let's quickly go back to our Skype line and uh, finish our conversation with Dr. Lord Mensa. And, uh, Doc, I know that the West African Central Bank's governors will be having a meeting later this month and they will make a final recommendation to the heads of state. Now, I, the lawyers will say, I put it to you, Doc, what will be your advice to these central bank governors as they meet by the middle of this month to take a final position on this single common currency? Yeah, I think um, it's clear uh, in my earlier submission that um, countries need to sacrifice for others. Because um, if you want all of us to converge in a particular criteria, if I have to go through the various convergent criteria that has been provided, clearly you could see that Ghana, as we speak now, we are fighting in some of them. Um, if you take, for instance, fiscal deficit of no more than 4% uh, of the GDP at the end of um, your year, yeah, even the 2020 budget, what were we proposing? Um, we were thinking about doing 4.9% of our GDP as fiscal deficit. The same uh, criteria is also telling you that that's the secondary part of it, that you need to enjoy some stability in your real you know, exchange rates. And are we realizing that in this country? We're not. So what I would say is that once they are going to meet, I made, it, I made it clear in my earlier submission that we should think about other countries sacrificing because we cannot all converge at one point or we cannot all converge to those criteria that they are looking for for us to enjoy the eco. So countries need to sacrifice clearly for others to uh, benefit because that is what happened in the Eurozone. Within the Eurozone, Germany had to sacrifice a lot, you know, for other countries. Because of the time they were, they were going into the Euro, Italy was nothing to write about. Um, Greece was nothing to write about. But in the end, they came together. And now the economic benefit is enormous to the extent that even UK going out as a result of Brexit is thinking otherwise how the impact would be, even though they were not completely part of the Eurozone and they were not <coughs> enjoying the eco, they were still enjoying some economic spillovers as a result of the Eurozone. Because once you get into that environment, transactions, free movement, I mean, everything that you do becomes so simple and easy because currencies are the same. So for me, I think 
if they are going to meet, my advice would be that they should think about sacrificing and forget about that convergent criteria. Once we come close, various countries come close to one or two of those criteria, we should convert. I think we're going to detect a lot to the world. And in the end, we're going to have very good bargaining power. And Doc, finally, so for you, you think that we should still work and go out of this currency. We shouldn't forget about it. No, not at all. Not at all. Because it comes with a lot of benefits. The benefit is huge, are huge compared to the, 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 the disadvantages or the losses that we'll make in case we should take that decision. So for me, um, it's not something that we should just give up on it. Uh, the countries that are enjoying the eco now, uh, it has stabilized their country. There are spillover benefits across the individual countries who are part of the common currency zone, which they can enjoy. And I would say that it's not something that we should give up on it. We should work towards it, but in the end, it's about sacrifice. Doc, I thank you so much for your time, and I appreciate you so much, and have a good time. George. Dr. Lord Mensah, he's a finance lecturer, he's an economist, and a consultant as well, sharing some interesting uh, thoughts with us. Then, Dr. Joseph Obey, he's president of Gutas. We also explore the trade implications of it. For And, and, and you had some quick reactions as well to uh, what Dr. Lord Mensah was saying. What are your thoughts on it, sir? Yeah, uh, I've agreed on so many occasions um, with um, Dr. Lord Mensa, he's actually my friend. Okay. But in this particular <laughs> instance, I do not agree with him. Okay. On the sacrifice issue, all other things I agree with mm. him. There are enormous benefits to be uh, um, achieved in mm. this. I've enumerated some mm. of them. And so there's no doubt about that. But if it should be done, it should be done well. Mm. Um, it, uh, sacrifices are not sustainable. How long can a country so sacrifice for others? We sign treaties, protocols, and we, we do some of these. But, but Germany has done that for the euro. Uh, the uh, economic, I mean, some would say that Germany is the backbone of the European Union. Yeah. Um, if we have countries, but we haven't heard Germany bullying its um, neighbors, but we have antecedents um, of, of um, bullying this thing uh, from other countries. And so it's it due to what um, the country itself is prepared to do. If we, uh, Germany have been able to do it, it doesn't mean that other countries can also sacrifice. Mm. Um, looking at where we are coming from, the challenges that we have as developing country, no other country can toy its economy with any sacrifice for other country. And mm. we should, uh, to tell the truth, if we have to do, all countries should come on board on an uh, equal footing. Mm. That, that's the only way... But you don't expect Nigeria South that commands about 70% of the total size of that region to be uh, wrapping shoulders with Benin. No, but the, the, uh, Benin, whatever its economy is, should be able to uh, meet this convergence. It's not the same as Nigeria. And, uh, how a country have a small, it's even easier to meet some of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, Nigeria rather should even have... A, a, a bigger problem because of its <coughs> size of economy. So mm. it's not about Nigeria coming to sacrifice for anybody. Mm. It, it should be done on equal footing so that it can be sustainable, so that one country will not set up and hijack the whole mm. thing because mm. of influence. Mm. Mm. Because we, we've seen it in the past where people um, have um, headquarters in their country, they, they finance um, a, a regional bodies and uh, like UN being financed by US and uh, sometimes some of these things. It shouldn't happen, mm. when, especially when you are tying your destinies to your economies and all that together. We do not go on that tangent of sacrifice. Let's bring it in. I'll, I'll be bringing happen. you some comment by the head of the accounts department at the University of Ghana, Dr. Ba, Professor Bab Watting. And let's do some social uh, media comments as well. It's very interesting, the thoughts that people are expressing on social media. But let me first bring you the thoughts of uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Bab Watting. And he says that... It's important to know that the key driving force for the common currency is trade among countries. And if West African countries are not trading among themselves, as you see Europe, then virtually no borders. It becomes very uncommon to talk about common currency at this time. If we are not trading among ourselves, well-integrated, 
sub-region not able to harness the benefit of the common currency. The main purpose of the money is to facilitate transaction. If countries are not transacting trade among themselves, then he thinks that it's flawed. It looks like there's even question about trade among the West African countries. Yes, sadly. Your members recently have had their own share about the investment laws. Yeah. And all, quick thoughts on Dr. Professor Bob Watson's thoughts about the, 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 the benchmark or the foundation for yeah. any common currencies about trade. trade. In West Africa, that is not happening. Uh, uh, sadly, and uh, that's what I was going to come about. Here. Yeah. If Germany was even sacrificing, Germany was the hub of um, uh, 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 industries mm. in um, Europe. And probably they might have put things on scale and see that if we sacrifice on this, we are going to uh, get the benefit because all our products are going to be um, uh, bought yeah. by these countries. So there, there are so many um, things that uh, the economists put on the scale when they are taking some of these decisions. Mm. When it comes to this echo and all that, how is going to uh, sustain itself in terms of stability and the value of the currency yeah. itself should be backed with productivity. Do we have it here? Which reserves are we going Which to use? Which reserves? Because the productivity, uh, the, uh, the goods, uh, uh, the manufacturing companies and all that are very scanty and mm. we depend so much on the uh, external um, resources in, uh, for import and all mm. that. And mm. that, uh, that has been the bane of uh, West African countries. Mm. So we will do this, and it will surprise you that it will still be a flop when we still depend on external sources for our mm. um, <laughs> goods. So we, we have to back it with productivity. How are you going to do it? That's the only way that will um, um, stabilize and sustain um, um, what we call um, mm. a, a currency. Let yeah. me do some social uh, media comments on what our viewers are already sharing their thoughts on social media. Joseph Aka says, for Francophone country, yes. Anglophone, I'm still searching how Nigeria and Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone are going to handle this. Uh, uh, Issa says, one and that, uh, but I think we read that. Mohammed uh, Gafuru says, except is uh, spend trip, I hope uh, I got it right, government to maintain I mean, 100 and 200 city notes, even after the introduction of the ECO, you knew you were anticipating a new currency, and yet you spent a lot of money on printing uh, these notes. And that comment about even the cost of local currencies, i.e. joining the ECO. Uh, to the Chris says, Nigeria would not get involved because we wouldn't agree to the agreement. Already, uh, mm. a Nigerian is, uh, France is proposing, interesting, a Nigerian is sharing his thoughts about this whole thing, uh, Kelvin says, no insult. Please tell us what you think about the introduction of the ECO in the sub-region. Surely ECO will be effective in this year. Some are already optimistic about it. Andy uh, Gambo says, I am hoping that the dream finally come to stay. Great men in Africa fought for this, but they never saw it. Men like Nelson Mandela, Gaddafi, and Kwame Nkrumah, I am proud and finally here. But my question is, which country will have the eco central bank? And Andy, there, there's a subtle battle between Ghana and Nigeria as in who should actually host the central bank. We know that Nigeria has the eco secretariat. And so the argument was that, listen, let Ghana also host the West African uh, central bank on this. But it looks like there's a problem there. Let's go, let's see whether we can get some thought in there in terms of what they think about it. Um, uh, uh, Hardy says, so what happened to the, it looks like people are worried about the 100 and 200 cities note. Uh, Pascal says, we need one example of the new currency echo, please. Send us one sample. <laughs> hmm. I think we've not even decided on even how the design will be done. And they said, it you know, this year. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Kenny says, I will believe when I see it. Well, the Dalton Thomases are already out there. Um, uh, Gideon says, this is useless. After all, they will still charge it to or change it to the dollars in the world market same as the city so what mm -hmm. makes the currency different from the city well maybe we need to bring in the bank of ghana and the west african monetary institute persons here whenever issued or not uh, i have lost interest in african leaders that is coming from uh kwesi uh Boateng. uh prempe as he says i foresee the british experience someday i mean Echo mm. exit. Mm. Interesting. Let's do a uh, last to Josh uh, uh, Coffee Stone. Say, please, what is the equivalence of a 
200 these notes. Uh, interesting. Uh, Mike Mercer says, it will not work at the beginning, but virtually it shall break one day. I remember the strong stance of the Soviet Union, but now where are they? Interesting comment. Well, and yeah. this might not be scientific, but yeah. again, it represents the yeah, right the views very, about of, yeah. what this currency yeah. and all the rest and blah, yeah. blah, yeah. Uh, would be introduced or not. And yeah. another critical thing that Dr. Bob, Professor Bob Watson raised in his comments was about trade. And it looks like it's a big problem. And it's good that we have you here, Guta. Yeah. What is happening? It looks like it's still a problem in terms of trading among the member countries. Uh, there's no um, problem um, as it's such. It's not that smooth, some would Yeah, it, it, it's not uh, that smooth because of the barriers. That's why I said that we, we are seeing all this thing through the lenses of the ECOWAS protocol. When we said that we remove barriers, bar barriers were not actually removed. We still had them when we are traveling and all that, the impediment that come your way and all that. And so if um, those challenges were not met and um, it, it weren't done well, then how much more um, a serious issue like fusing your currencies to, together? That's where the apprehension is coming from. We are looking it through the lenses of the ECOWAS protocol itself. And um, if anything, to go by how they have been able to conduct them themselves in the past, then it doesn't give us any hope for this um, currency. But that's why I was also saying that um, for intra-regional in, intra trade, somebody was saying that we are still going to um, change into dollars and other mm. uh, foreign mm. currencies mm. 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 again and all that. Uh, that, that is uh, still there. But then if we, we are able to do the intra-regional trade also, this one is going to enhance mm. and facilitate easy ease of doing business and cost of doing business. And it, it will be the best thing that can even happen to us. Mm. But for the problems that... Uh, but so I get from so you that from you, good time members, yeah. you want this then badly. No, it, it, yeah. Uh, if, it, if you're uh, that, I'm saying that trade exactly. in the region, I'm saying that you see Echo all protocols. that we are saying. What we are saying is that all that has happened. God, there's nothing wrong for us to um, um, uh, do inter intra trade mm -hmm. where uh, we, there wouldn't be any um, uh, frustrations of uh, uh, changes the disparities in currencies elsewhere and all that because eventually we are thinking that we have the larger market of the West African. Um, community. Even now, we are thinking about the larger market of Africa. So um, anything that goes to enhance on this, nobody will say that it's not good. Mm -hmm. But then we are saying that the modalities so far, and from uh, the questions that economists are asking and all that, doesn't suggest that we are ready and that we have to hasten slowly. Mm -hmm. That's all that I'm saying, mm -hmm. and that we have to be careful. The countries should understand whatever regulations and the rules that... Um, the central bank of this echo will bring, we should understand. We should also appreciate the sanctions that will be brought to bear. Because if we are not able to do this with fear, and then we just do it like we did the echo and all that, some country will hijack, some country will take your neutral decision, and at that time we've put ourselves into it, and then it will create a whole lot of mess uh, for, for our various eco um, 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 economies. That's all that I, I'm talking about. Mm. So if it should be done, let's sit down. All stakeholders should sit down. We should also uh, dissect it properly. Mm. And then even look, because we have a reference. That's why when you said it, it's a myth, it's not a myth, it's a reality. Because we have a reference in the, uh, the, the euro, mm. which have been um, a kind of a success. Mm. And so if we have a reference in something that has been done, in a certain block, mm. uh, a regional block, then definitely but, but just it can like also Professor Bob Watson said, the basis of that was some effective trade in the European zone. Exactly. But there's a problem that's in West Africa. That's the underlying, that's why I'm saying that we should also think about productivity, how we also make sure that um, our, um, of course, especially the continental free trade is uh, putting countries to think about industrialization and all that. When these things come, then naturally trade also become a uh, very um, um, common among mm. ourselves because we have the products to sell among ourselves then naturally it will pull this and this. then also it will also enhance the actual value if there's no productivity to back whatever currency that we are going to hold it will be like a, a <coughs> excuse me to say a toilet paper and it will have any value so we have to think through all these things before we think about 
uh, going for this. Well, for me, if it is possible for us to do it concurrently with our various distance, so where gradually we we'll get to accept it, where things have been <coughs> um, streamlined and all that, then we all are mm. very positive mm. about it. It's possible mm. to do that one also. Mm. If um, the, uh, our um, uh, finance teams will uh, accept that. Those are the thoughts of uh, Dr. Joseph Obeng. He's the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association. He had the thoughts of uh, Richard Mpabi, a trade consultant, and also Dr. Lord Mensa. He's a finance lecturer, consultant, and an economist sharing his thoughts. I know the debate was still going on in your homes and your offices about whether this eco would happen or not. Let the debate go on. And let's look forward to our central bank governors and heads of state to take a decision whether they are ready for this single common currency. Let the debate go on and I hope that one day it would happen, even if it's not this year. My name is George Yaffe. This has been the business edition of PM Express. Let the debate go on about the echo. Express was brought to you by Emirates. Fly better.